We've proved that the union, concatenation, and closure of context-free languages is another context-free language and could determine the corresponding context-free grammar. But what if we have a regular language? Does it have a context-free grammar? Let's find out. So remember, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. A regular expression is going to be either the empty set, the empty string, any symbol, and any concatenation, union, or closure of regular languages. While it is and will remain forever true that definitions are the whole of mathematics, all else is commentary, it's also true that theorems are useful time savers, and so we prove that the union concatenation, and closure of context-free languages is a context-free language with a specific context-free grammar details omitted. So remember, if you build it, they will come. If we can find the context-free grammar for the elementary regular languages, we can construct all the others through unions, concatenations, and closures. So first, let's consider the empty language. We can let G be the context-free grammar for the regular language if, well, let's see, we have to have a start symbol. Let's call that S. Now, intuitively, since there are no strings in our language, there can be no terminal symbols. So our set of terminal symbols is the empty set. And, since we can't produce anything, our language is empty, there can be no production rules. So our set of production rules is the empty set. And, since there are no production rules, there's no reason to introduce any other variables besides s. And so the set of variables is just s. Next, let's see if we can find a context-free grammar for the language consisting of just the empty string. So again, we'll let s be our start symbol. Now, this language includes the empty string, which means the empty string itself must be a terminal symbol. And since it's the only string in our language, it's the only terminal symbol. So our set of terminal symbols is just the empty string. Now, since the empty string is a string in our language, there must be a rule that produces it. And again, it's helpful to think of s as a string in our language. If we view s as a string in our language, then the rule must be s produces the empty string. And again, since the empty string is the only string in our language, we don't need and shouldn't have any other production rules. So we don't need any variables besides s. And by the same reasoning, we have the context-free grammar for the language consisting of a single symbol where, well, do your own homework. Now, because the union, concatenation, and closure of context-free grammars is a context-free grammar, and we have the context-free grammars for the simplest regular languages, we can use the union, concatenation, and closure to find any regular language. So let's find a context-free grammar for this regular language. So a useful idea, the last shall be first. And what that means is let's start with the last operation here. And so this is the star closure of the union of the symbol 0 and 1, 1. So if we can find the context-free grammar for that union, we can produce the context-free grammar for the star closure. But this is the union of the language consisting of just 0 and the language consisting of just the symbol 1, 1, and we can write down the context-free grammar for these two languages. The context-free grammar for the language consisting of just the symbol 0 is going to have variables, just the start symbol, terminal symbols, just 0, our start symbol, and the production rule, S0, produces 0. 
Likewise, a context-free grammar for the language consisting of just the element 1, 1, and note that should be viewed as a single symbol, not a string, is going to be And we can find the context-free grammar for the union of the two languages, which will be the union of all our variables, plus a new start symbol, the union of our terminal symbols, our new start symbol, and the union of the rules together with a new production rule, which will take our start symbol to one of the other start symbols. And finally, the context-free grammar for the star closure of our language is going to have variables, all of them, plus a new start symbol. We'll have a new start symbol. Our terminal symbols will be all of them, plus, if we haven't already included it, the empty string. And our production rules, all of them, plus an extra production rule that takes us from the start symbol to the start symbol followed by the start symbol, and possibly including the empty string. So remember, no computer was ever fired for making a mistake. We should verify that this is in fact the context-free grammar for our regular language. We could do this by choosing an element of our language, then seeing if we can produce it. But we'll let you do that.